The last big topic for this chapter is the psychrometric chart. I have a copy. I'm going to now uh, pass it out. So the psychrometric chart in our textbook is in the appendix, and it's back here. The psychrometric chart at 1 ATM in the SI units, or the psychrometric chart at 1 ATM for the English units. If you're designing stuff in Houston, Corpus Christi, you're at sea level, guess what? No problem. You want to move to Colorado, maybe some resort part of Colorado and work as an engineer, and you're a mile high or higher, don't use the 1 ATM chart. Go get the high altitude chart, or actually rely on the computer, which adjusts for your actual altitude. But all of this is for 1 ATM. Okay. So let's uh, have an introduction to the chart. What's on the x-axis? Dry bulb temperature. What's on the y-axis? And so the y can go either on the left side, which is traditional, or on the right side. Don't get fooled. It's no problem. We can plot the y-axis on the right side. True. And it's the humidity ratio. The one I gave you doesn't have kilogram per kilogram, does it? What does it have for the one I gave you? Gram per kilogram. A little subtlety, but it's a factor of a thousand. So that when you come up and look at maybe a number like this, Instead of being 0 0.010, it's 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, let's find lines. First of all, what's a line of a constant temperature, let's say, of, uh, what is that, 30 degrees C? What does it, this is so simple, but what does a line of constant temperature of 30 degrees C look like? That. What does a line of constant humidity ratio look like? that. Okay. Now, what does a line of rel constant relative humidity look like? So if we plotted the one of 50% relative humidity, it would look like that, right? Isn't that our line of constant 50% relative humidity? And then if it's 60%, 70, here's 90% relative humidity. What's out here? What's this line? What percent relative humidity is that one? 100. It's saturated air. So right away, why did they plot this over on the right and not the left? Because if somebody says my humidity ratio is 0 0.010 and the dry bulb temperature is 0 degrees C, that would say that it's at the combination here like that. It would be out here. Do you think you can have moist air at that condition? It's in no man's land. It doesn't exist. It would be beyond saturated air. It doesn't, you can't have like super saturated. This is all equilibrium. Okay? So there's, this is, this is the extent of the plot. Okay. Now, we talk about dew point. Let's go out here and, and do an example. Um, Let's pick 30 degrees and 0.01 relative humidity, just like that. So here is my condition of the moist air. Can you tell me roughly what the relative humidity is closest to whatever percent? A little bit below 40%, 38%. Yeah, let's call it 38%. Can you tell me what is the dew point temperature for that air? 30 degrees C is a dry bulb. 0.010 is the humidity ratio. It's a little less than 40% relative humidity. What is the dew point temperature? That's a hard question. Do this thought experiment. If I move in this direction along this line, how, can I, how could I do that? Well, I'm not changing the amount of water vapor in my moist air mixture. I'm just lowering the dry bulb temperature, right? What, what, how could that be accomplished? You just cool it. That's all you're doing. You're cooling it. Okay. What happens to the relative humidity? I cool it. Oh, look it. Now it's 50%. Oh, I cool it some more. Look at it. It's 60%. It's 70%. It's 80. It's 90. You could cool it 
not increasing or decreasing the amount of water vapor until you get to saturated air. What temperature do I have to cool it to in order to get it to be saturated air? 14 degrees C. They come over here, they brought it down, and they looked and they said, oh, that's 14 degrees C. What is the dew point temperature for my air when it has a dry bulb of 30 and a humidity ratio of 0.010? 14 degrees C. That's my dew point temperature, right? All right, let me ask this. If I said, no, it's not uh, 30 degrees C in that humidity ratio, it's 20 degrees C and that humidity ratio. Right there is the current state. Of, for new condition, that can steam, or not steam, moist air at that condition, what is the dew point temperature? 14 degrees C. Somebody says, okay, I'm going to really make it hard on you. It's now 40 degrees C and right there is my condition. 0 0.010. What is my dew point temperature? You got it. Isn't this easy? So actually, a line of constant, uh, a line of constant omega, is also a line of constant dew point temperature. Just like we talked about, this is a line of constant what? Dry bulb. And this is a line of constant what? Relative humidity. Now we know how to do lines of constant dew point. Everything along that line has the same dew point temperature. All right. Now, what about the wet bulb? Oh, I said the dew point was hard. Wet bulb is really hard, but it's doable. What does a. a do you want to go out and just go back to this 30 degrees C and this humidity, which is right around here? Where did I put it? I erased that dot. Is that about right? Okay. What is the wet bulb temperature for the moist air at that condition? This is really hard. The only place that you see wet bulb on this chart is right here, isn't it? Yeah. And what it is is uh, they have lines that are sloped like this. And they also have, this is enthalpy. I'm just going to say that some charts like the one I gave you do try to draw a difference between the line of constant enthalpy and the line of constant wet bulb. This one, they're the same. They're basically the same slope. So basically along this line, if I would go like this, I would come up and I would get to that point and it looks like I would drop down and it would be a little below 20 degrees C wet bulb. I mean, I'm trying to, 20 degrees C is close enough for the wet bulb for that condition. So lines of constant wet bulb run like lines of constant enthalpy. Okay. Yeah, they're slightly different slope and they're slightly different on this plot that I gave you. It's a little better. It's an ASHRAE handout. The wet bulb temperature line is dashed line, and it's numbered in some of the lines. Okay. How about a line of constant specific volume? What does that look like? Well, this is specific volume. And so they, uh, they have it like this, maybe. This is a line of constant specific volume of 0.90 meters cube per kilogram of dry air reciprocate that you have the density all right this is another line of 0.85 and so they have a bunch of those lines on the one i handed out okay all right so if i looked at it and i said back to this problem right here what is the specific volume you want to estimate it little over 0.87 that's right yep okay now the enthalpy and notice that they have a basically it's the enthalpy of the moist air it's like we were talking about it's the enthalpy of the dry air plus the omega times the enthalpy of the water vapor that's our enthalpy of the mixture our moist air that's what they plotted 
And those lines, you can see how they, they shoot down like this. They go essentially the same slope as the uh, wet bulb. <clears throat> so if somebody said, what is the mixture enthalpy at this condition? Well, I'd come back up here. And I'd have to read that off. That looks like 56. Does it look like 56 kilojoules per kilogram of dry air? That accounts for the enthalpy associated with the water vapor in that mixture. Okay. Look good? All the calculations you can do by hand, and some of them you can use the chart. Now, a lot of things in engineering kind of bother me if you think about it a little bit. This is called the psychrometric chart. It's pretty obvious what it is. Somebody was a genius that first came up with this. Why can't we in engineering go back and recognize the genius that did this and actually attach their name on it? Right? Right? Like Newton's law, right? There's a lot of things where we recognize and, you know, they actually would have big banquets and celebrations and announce that, hey, uh, from here on out, uh, in honor of Professor blah, 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 who did this great work in thermodynamics, we're going to call this the blah, blah, blah equation or the blah, 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 whatever, right? All right. Well, the reason is, is the person who really did this still has his name associated with a company that's in business making money because he did it as an engineer and he had a company. It's like Westinghouse, you know, Westinghouse or, or, or other names out there. So carrier, yeah. It really should be, in my opinion, called the carrier chart. But if you're trying to sell stuff <laughs> that's, and you're not marketing carrier products, well then, why don't we call it something? Well, anyway, it's a neutral name, but if the person would have probably not been in business or had a generic name not associated with his name, then, then it would have been, you know, like happy, happy air conditioning company, you know, it's, it's, instead of carrier corporation. Oh, uh, I got digressed a little there. Let's press on.